My name is John Bouchel, and I am not a bot. I was in school administration after spending a stint in the military. I was a teacher, a coach, and later became an administrator. Like most athletic males, I was assigned as part of the school security team. Eventually, I was trained by the Department of Homeland Security, several sheriff's departments, and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, GBI. Prior, I was trained in the military. I was a combat crew member and a certified marksman with both rifles, pistols, M16, and 40 caliber Colt. With an oak leaf cluster, multiple awards, I was a likely person to help with school security and had an extensive background in technology and video surveillance as well. I held an SCI security clearance, which is the very highest we have in America. I say these things to help you understand my background and to weigh my opinion as to the events in Parkview, Florida, 30 minutes from my home where I live, now retired from school administration. As an administrator in charge of a large high school of 1,800 students and 140 employees, I held tabletop exercises and wrote publications and helped with multiple school and multi-jurisdictional school systems training as a developer and a presenter. Never did I hear from, receive information from, or was contacted by, read any publications, or gathered statistics from the United States Secret Service. Not once. Ever. Yet three weeks prior to the shooting in Florida, the United States Secret Service was not only at the school, they held the training. I talked to one of my teachers. Uh, in fact, it was the same teacher that I ended up being with, um, you know, yesterday when all of this went down. And he said that the Secret Service came and trained them on what the new safety protocols would be. I have also, despite actually thwarting a school shooting by an armed predator at my school, have never seen, spoke with, or was interviewed or contacted by the FBI or the United States Secret Service. It's worthy to note that the 911 response time was in excess of 20 minutes. In fact, I was only contacted by a few reporters. No reporters ever contacted my students for interviews or opinions. I never spoke to a national law enforcement agent, much less the United States Secret Service. So to hear the FBI were the first responders, only beating CNN by minutes, and a wealthy Florida area saturated with law enforcement shocked me. Seeing the amazing amount of CNN coverage, so well organized and all espousing one message, and only one message, is equally troubling. Seeing a student saying she actually walked with the shooter while evacuating and heard shots shocked me. You were walking down the hall. He had already fired at that time. Yes, sir, with him. Weren't you scared? Um, in the moment I wasn't because there was obviously definitely another shooter involved. So you think there was more than do you think there was more than one There's shooter? Three shooters. Seeing video of a student telling us she was told they would have a drill that day with actors deeply troubles me. Because they were putting us through drills and we all thought this I'll was call a you drill. right back. We thought this was a drill. You aren't going to be worried if like people thought that it was just another like intense drill. They got told it's not a drill before where they were going to be shooting blank. Seeing the same young man over and over who visited CNN that day and whose father is an FBI agent troubles me. Seeing and hearing the same narratives over and over that conflict with every aspect of training and experience I have is extremely unsettling. I saw video interviews of students claiming multiple shooters. This is troubling as well. I realized that the shooter apparently pulled the fire alarm to create chaos and provide a richer target environment. That alarm would have sent a signal to its precise time and location. At least one interview I watched was a student saying her doorknob was rattled, and she heard a voice saying, go try another door. This needs exploration. In my utterly qualified expert opinion, there are several troubling facts being dispensed that I refuse to accept. Some of them are, why was the shooter visited 39 times by local law enforcement but never placed on a watch list, why was his extensive school discipline not compiled and then presented to the school board for total expulsion from the schools? Why was the FBI first to respond when the school is so close to the police department and an officer with a radio was supposedly on campus? How did CNN have so many kids in place to echo their exact verbiage and focus on the actual weapon and not the shooter? Why isn't the alleged United States Secret Service involvement in a public school being examined? Who is this reoccurring student that has family in the FBI? 
Why are the interviews that do not agree with the one shooter or the narrative that CNN is pushing being heard? Why aren't the multiple videos available? With the floor plan that I have seen, I would have had approximately 22 cameras in that building and over 140 in my school. I realize that some of the videos will be used for the trial of the shooter. However, it is in the interest of the public to see some of the unused footage that is available. Why was the United States Secret Service at this school providing training three weeks prior? And how was the weakest, sloppiest, and most often not on real location news company all over this son of the FBI agent with an amazing and uncanny ability to find a news camera in multiple states in the last six months? Did this infamous teenager actually graduate already? Has the United States Secret Service ever been to any other schools to supervise and provide training for an active shooter situation? How could the United States Secret Service possibly visit all 22,000 high schools in the United States? And how would they be chosen? Who identified this shooter? And how did law enforcement track him to the retail store he was arrested at? Why has the entire CNN narrative been to attack the Second Amendment when at least three government institutions, possibly five if you count DFACS, failed miserably to help the mentally ill. Why has the school district decided to demolish this building like they did at Sandy Hook if their narrative is true and correct? Why not allow the forensics to be published and to be explored completely? All in all, my professional opinion is this stinks to the high heavens. Either we are surrounded by the most incompetent news people in the world, who don't ask questions or give a damn about these murders or have no concept of why this happened and will happen again soon. I for one am sick to death of the fake news outlets pretending that this is about a rifle. It's not. It's about a mentally ill person totally abandoned and discarded and politically expediently ignored by multiple agencies allowed to commit inhumane acts of terror due to incompetence. Johnny Bravo at John Bouchelle.